Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I cannot leave well enough alone. We are going to change up the lighting in the grill on my GMC Sierra AT4. Just tweak or enhance it a little bit. And we're going to do that with another Putco Virtual Blade. Let's go. Let me show you exactly what today's project is going to entail. So you may remember in some previous videos, I talked about removing the four Raptor lights that I've had here in the top of the grill. I've now taken those out. I also had a Putco Virtual Blade 8 inch bar here, as well as here. I've taken those out. You can still see a bracket back there. Cause what I want to do is I want to complement the 37 inch Putco bar that's here now. I got some tint on it. That's why it's a bit of a smoke color, but I want to put another one up here where those Raptor lights were. So I can kind of have a parallel set of lights across the grill. They won't quite match up to the DRL of the headlights. They'll be in just a little bit. So you have this C shape, it'll come in. These will be a little bit closer together and then they'll go across. And yes, I'm missing the logo because I have another one on the way. So in due time, but that's what this install is going to be. You probably noticed I got some wiring hanging out here already. This is from the original blade down there. So these are the wires we got to hook up. I'll show you how to do all of that. I am choosing to hook them up to a power to ground running to my aux beam switch panel right here. I don't want them to come on all the time with the DRLs and the headlights. They do give you a wire tap from Putco, or fuse tap I should say, so you can tap the fuse for your headlights or your DRL system, and then when the vehicle's on, they'll come on, they'll do a little animation. So I'll show you what that animation looks like shortly, but I'm choosing to have it come on with a switch. I don't necessarily want them on all the time. That's just how I'm choosing to do it, but you could really do it either way. So over here on the bench, we have our 37 inch Putco Virtual Blade. It goes to a control box that has a fuse. And then I've temporarily just hooked it up to a battery here. Let me show you, there's positives connected there. And to make it come on, you just have to connect the ground. So I'll do that now. So there's the animation that's programmed in for right now. And then you have an emergency light wire because these can be used for emergency work lights. So if you choose to do that and have that feature enabled, you have to pick yourself up one of these. This is necessary to be able to use a remote to turn the emergency work lights on or off. Then there are some other wires here that when you ground them out, they change the programming of the virtual blade. So let me give you a quick demonstration. So first the orange one changes our running light settings or emergency light settings. So if I just tap this, you can see it gives us a number of different options. Which I'll show you again later in the video when we have it all installed. So let's go back to where it was. And then the green is our animation, our startup sequence. So when I go to turn the bar on every time, you get a different animation. So this is one. This is one. Now notice that it finishes on the same color, which is the white bar. Whatever pattern I leave it on, this animation will do with a little dance or a little show and then end on whatever pattern I have it set to. So if I didn't want it white as my final setting, I could have it orange as an example by tapping the orange wire again. So there's orange. And then if I tap the green wire, it'll do the animation, but now end on orange. So lots of options. I'm just gonna turn it back to white because I know that one's set to white right now. So now this one's to white and I want them to be the same because I am going to be hooking up this remote control. So I do have the emergency lighting feature for the strobe light effects on the different patterns, but also because when I use the aux beam switch to turn them on, I want them to do the exact same animation and have the final setting be exactly the same. So just a couple things before we get the installation started. I recommend downloading the instructions that will give you a nice visual aid on how to connect it to your battery, but it's simple. Red to red, black to black, the light will come on. Put a switch in between there, then the switch will turn it on or off. Use a fuse tap as provided, and then the circuitry for the fuse tap will turn it on and off. So that's very simple. Attach the white wire if you want emergency lighting to function, but then you need one of these remotes. These are optional. You can purchase that separately if it's something you decide you wanna do. They also show you how to wire it up here, but you could ignore that and just connect this to the battery. These three wires here just have to do with programming, which I demonstrated already. But first we're gonna tint the virtual blade with some tint from Vivid. I've already cut it out here. I just need to apply it. Comes in a nice roll like this called Ultimate. 
and that's it right there. So we're going to put this on there and then we're going to strap it to the grill. So for the strapping, they have these built-in straps right here. Keep it easy, that's on each end. And then they have one in the middle if you choose to use it. This can actually be cut off or it can be slid left to right. So this could be one solid bar all the way across. This is just a cover because it's holding this clip in the back to be able to secure it in the middle. I think it would look better without it, don't get me wrong, but because of the way I have the old one secured, I had a bit of a bend in this and it's okay to have a bend, but I have a strap that's kind of holding that back in the center. Yes, it would look better without it, I agree, but it's not a deal breaker for me, but we're going to use it just to keep it consistent. So install it how you want, that's just how I'm doing mine. Well there, that's nice and tinted now. Pretty simple. I like that film, so easy to use. Now let's just take the grill off here. I've got this held in by a cable tie there and a cable tie here. I've done this so many times now. It is actually not too big of a pain. This should just come off now. Yeah, nice and dirty. Look at that. But look at this, easy to work with. Now this will be super easy to connect. This little smudge here is the center, so we can lay that in that area, run a cable tie through it, cinch it down, and then do the same for both of the ends. And then there are quick connects here that would go to the control box. I've just undone them. We're gonna feed that one at a time through these openings. It's gonna be a tight fit, but I should be able to get both of those through there if I start with the big one first, and then the little one behind it. And then once the grill is back on, we'll have to make sure these are connected, and then this will be fished through the side of the engine compartment and meet up with the other one. And then I'm going to just simply solder all the same colors together, and then hook up what I need to for the switching, and it'll pretty much be ready to test out. All right, we have the virtual blade in the grill sitting over there, but to gain access to everything and fish these wires, I'm going to take off the intake shroud here. I've already taken out some of the clips, but that's these clips right here. Very simple to get out, just like that. They might come apart, but that's no big deal. Put them back together later. So we'll just take all the rest of those out, but you also have to take off this latch right here and do not accidentally close the hood when this handle is off of here you will have one heck of a time trying to open the hood if you don't have access to this latch. So we're just not gonna close the hood for this whole install. Okay, I'm just gonna tuck these wires right back through here. And I should be able to pull them through on this side. I just have to try and do this all together at the same time. So just set that there. There they are. So that will fit there quite nicely. I'll secure that in a little bit, but this one is gonna stick out a little farther because this one actually sits in behind. I thought about putting this one lower. The only challenge is we have a camera in here and it would be in the way of the camera and it's just not gonna work. So from a distance, if you're a few feet ahead of the truck, you're not gonna notice that one is inset an inch more than the other, won't really matter. We are making progress. We got the grill back on. We got this shroud back in place. This is all cinched up with cable ties. You can see there, 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 and there. You really can't see them, but I know where they are, so that's why I can see them. So next, I just have to connect this to the quick connections. Now that that's all ready to go, solder all of these together. So both of these light bars will behave identically, and then we'll connect them to the power and ground. But I can't forget, I gotta put this also in line because it is gonna be able to do the flashing for the work light feature. Should we ever wanna use it, we can do that.
All right, our soldering and our connections are all done. Let me show you what we got here. So we have both of the control units just kind of stacked together. We got all of our quick connects nice and orderly. We have our remote control here for the emergency lights all set up. We got our fuses in the same location. We got all the wiring bundled up here and we have our startup tap wire right here, which we just ground out whenever we want to change what this looks like. So the pattern tap here will change what the startup pattern looks like. So I'm just going to tuck this stuff down here behind the headlight for now, and then I'll cable tie it in nice and tight somewhere in there. But I want to show you a quick demonstration of the two adjustment wires here. So let me give you a bit of a preview here. I got my aux beam remote. I have it assigned to number 10 and voila. So that's the startup sequence that I chose. If I want to edit that startup sequence, all I have to do is tap the green wires here by grounding them out. There's an amber version, a little bit of both, a little bit of both the other way, and then the one that you saw first. And then I can also change what the fixed pattern is going to stay at by tapping the orange wires. So I could have Raptor style lights in amber, Raptor style lights in white, amber solid, and white solid. And remember, these middle black clips can be cut off. So it would just be solid all the way across. That's just an option for you. Now I know what you wanna see. You wanna see these with these DRLs on at the same time. So why don't we pull the truck outside and do that? Let's just turn them off for now. And just wait a sec, before I do that, you probably wanna see the emergency lights. So let's turn these back on. Let's grab the remote. There's the emergency lights. And then I have button two set up to adjust the speed. So each press will change the speed of that pattern. I can actually change the pattern again by ground the orange wire here. Change the speeds. Oh, and turn it off. Back to normal or just off altogether. Well, there we go. Thank you, Putco, for sending over that 37 inch light bar to match up with its twin. Now we have parallel light bars in the grill. I think it looks great. The virtual blades are a great product. Three year warranty, by the way. Definitely check them out. I'll leave a link in the video description below. Everything you need to know is there. Their website has all the instructions. Again, I recommend that you print them out. I even did. I didn't really need to because I'm kind of familiar with it. But just these diagrams, if you print it in color too, you just can't mess it up. Anyway, I'm quite happy. I'm gonna keep it like that for a while now. Hopefully you like it as much as I do. But if you like today's video, hit that like button. Definitely hit subscribe if you wanna catch more of these DIY projects. And we'll talk to you next time.